Let's uh, jump into Intel's Altera did a spin out and brought new mid-range product out. I mean, what's with all the excitement of, of FPGAs now? Look, Pat, I mean, there's a couple things going on, right? So this is a reminder. Altera was some, a company that Intel acquired years back, uh, became their, their PSG group. Um, and now just this last, what, was about a year ago, they announced that they were going to spin the FPGA business back out a little bit in the style of what they did with like Mobileye. They spun it out, but yet still track and hold the majority of the stock. The way it's pronounced is Altera, an Intel company, but it is standing alone. It is being run by um, Sandra Rivera. Sandra is someone that we work very closely with, uh, most recently ran the DCAI business for Intel. She's at the helm. They are um, planning to, it was pretty clear from the onset of this, that this will be another public company. Um, I think a lot of this comes down to, Pat, the the desire. You know, we, let's talk about, you know, a company like Lattice Semiconductor, which 13, 14 of the last 15 quarters has shown remarkable growth, high, high margins. Yeah. Um, and has operated really in the low to mid-end range. And so all these other companies like Xilinx and Altera played a little bit higher up in the range. And I think Altera sees the opportunity. Pat Gelsinger sees the opportunity. Sandra Rivera sees the opportunity that the, you know, field programmable, which is, you know, the FP is designed for, is, is an important design right now as companies, you know, the ASIC, look, sorry, there's so much to talk about, man. My brain running all over the place. Oh, dude, it's, ASIC it's is this really sexy topic right now, right? You know, the Grok chip, the uh, Inferentia chip, the Samba Nova chip, and then of course you got the, the kind of like the TPUs. You've got, you know, the, the suspected uh, NVIDIA getting into some of this themselves. You've got uh, uh, Microsoft doing it, and peers partnering it. And the thing about the ASIC is it's it's really hard to do, takes a long time. And if you make a mistake, it's not very forgivable, not to mention Intel, what they're doing with Gaudi. The field programmable isn't going to be necessarily the replacement of that, but for certain workloads, it is an incredibly robust way to build something that has some flexibility. So think about like the in-between the full programmability of a GPU. Think about something that's more like a a more specific chip use case that still leaves an amount of programmability into it. And so the opportunity to do this, I mean, at the high end, you can do almost anything you want with this. And it's very expensive. I mean, Xilinx was a $40 billion acquisition for AMD. This is a very valuable type of technology. But in the mid and the lower range, being able to do a number of different, um, you know, programmable things to have, you know, easy to incorporate AI, uh, be able to play in that segment, uh, be able to operate on top of open frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow, um, being able to you know work against standards, whether you're building for connectivity and Ethernet or memory and CXL. There's just a lot of capabilities top to bottom in, in this. And so I think they see the big opportunity in the business. They see the growth in the category. They actually see the fact that there isn't sort of a known large competitor in the wild. There's large competitors that are business units inside of businesses now, but now they can be a 100% FPGA focused company in the wild that's putting mega resources. And, you know, I don't think this is so much shots fired at our, our, our friends at Lattice Semiconductor, but I do think that this is a clear signal of intent that they see them coming up the stack and how successful the company has been able to, to perform and saying, we've got great assets. We've got great historic research. We've got, uh, a strong go-to-market sales force, and we see value in programmability. And I, I think it's also just showing that the category as a whole has a lot of upside. Um, and, and like I said, across many things, low power, networking, communications, and then of course I mentioned AI. So I'll leave the the, the launch new products to you in the mid-range panel. Leave you with that, and of course, uh, whatever you want to add about the overall launch of the business. Yeah, so just stepping back here, uh, what are FPGAs used for? Uh, two things. They're the on-ramp to ASICs, meaning a lot of the time, or, or a CPU design. So before you harden something and you, you, do, you go from simulation to creating an FPGA to then creating uh, hardened silicon. So for instance, when I was at AMD and we did Opteron, we created an FPGA design, which was gigantic, by the way to get closer in 
uh, off of simulation before you spend a ton of money uh, hardening that silicon. FPGAs are also used as the main brain. It can be used as compute. It can be used as I.O. It can be used in many different app AI applications. Um, and then when you add on top of that, uh, putting uh, an FPGA plus some hardened silicon, like for I.O. Or, or an AI block, it gets, it gets even more interesting. And the trick has always been to come up with the right software because it was hard to program uh, these these things. And sorry, uh, the other application uh, can be when you have a standard that's that's mid midstream, like all the initial uh, 5G silicon that uh, went into uh, wireless um, edge were all FPGAs. And then after the standard got fully baked, all those chips got most of those chips got transferred to uh, an ASIC, but that's kind of where where it sits in. It's a lot more programmable than an ASIC, and it's also time to market is probably a year quicker than uh, an ASIC. Uh, but it's not as <laughs> sorry about that, folks. Uh, not as programmable as a, on the air. as a as a CPU. But anyways, with that background, I got to give I'm going to give hats off to Lattice who really, I think, kicked off all of this competitive action. And I don't think we would have seen this activity from uh, Altera with, uh, without it. Because they came in, Lattice came in with brand new designs on the low power, low compute capability. And they also launched a brand new uh, mid-range that they're getting a ton of uh, design wins on. So I think that really motivated the rest of the industry uh, to, to, to move here. Uh, Altera has um, four different layers, right? They've got nine, seven, five, and coming soon is three. Agile X3 competes directly with what Lattice has today at their uh, low power. Um, and the Agile X5, uh, which is, is mid-range, is now broadly uh, available. So competition is good. And they've got three, five, seven, and nine. Uh, for all these, I guess the question is, how quickly can can Altera get refocused on on this and wake up every morning that this is all they do? And the reason I bring this up is because Altera, for many years inside of Intel, was the thesis was we were going to put FPGAs inside of uh, Xeons, right, uh, processors, and that didn't end up uh, panning panning out very well. So how quickly can the company get uh, focused on this? We're going to have to see. And then, by the way, AMD Xilinx, what do you have up your sleeve? And are you going to focus and bring out some new uh, new designs uh, on uh, modern uh, manufacturing techniques?